Hi, Alan Stratton from Maswood Turns. At a recent club meeting, we had Dale Dallin do a presentation on a three-stave inside-out project. In this case, it was uh, a more of a flame where there's a three-stave inside-out and a inner, just a flame sort of thing, and a base. But of course, the hard part is the three-stave. I hadn't made a three-stave for quite a while, so I decided it's Time to do one again. So let's make this three stave inside out wood turning project. Key to turning a triple stave inside out project is wood preparation. This wood is sweet gum harvested from urban forestry. It is dry and is mostly heartwood. I've milled it to just over 1.25 inches. A great reference is the February 2010 issue of American Wood Turner. However, he used a bandsaw and I prefer a table saw since I believe it is safer for me. Your preference may vary. In the article he gives a formula for the width of a board given its thickness. That is not enough for me. I solved the same formula to give me the width of the first cut that is waste and then the width of the remaining cuts for the staves. The next key is cutting at the correct angle. We need 120 degrees for a three stave project. How do we cut 120 degrees? Well, first, subtract 90 degrees because a table saw is already oriented to 90 degrees. That leaves 30 degrees. A magnetic electronic finder does a great job. I also made a new insert for the blade so that I did not chew up my original. Since my blade tilts to the left, I made an auxiliary rip fence that I can set and clamp to the table saw. To position the fence, I use a scrap board with parallel sides for precise positioning before clamping the rip fence. Another sacrificial board is screwed to the fence so that the saw blade can embed in the rip fence. The first cut is to cut away the waste portion that cannot be used, at least in this project. Adjust the auxiliary rip fence before cutting the next three staves. Then position the staves for the first turning. Clamp them securely while applying strapping tape that has fiberglass fibers embedded in the tape. This provides a huge safety measure. I also placed two dots of thick CA glue on each joint and let it cure thoroughly before removing the clamps. Mount the bundle between centers making sure the center points are in the exact center of the bundle where the three joints meet. The first order business is to cut a quarter inch groove near each end of the bundle. This will be used later for alignment when gluing the wood together again. Then cut an asymmetric cull for the inside turning, taking special care at the beginning and ending of the cut. A triple is easier at this point than a four stave since the wood does not protrude quite as far. Then sand starting at 80 grit sandpaper. I like to apply shellac friction polish at this point, even if I want to apply other finish later. It helps any glue squeeze out and provides a good base finish. Then after sawing off the ends of the bundle, the staves were still stuck together. A couple of taps with a mallet and chisel split the staves apart easily. Reverse the staves. Gluing the staves is an interesting process. I chose Type Bond Original Extend Glue for a longer working time. I'll let it dry overnight anyway. I use glue sparingly and take an extra wipe to reduce the glue near the cut edges. The extra wipe will hopefully reduce squeeze out on the already turned surfaces. Since the surfaces have been finished, cleaning wet glue is not a big deal. Remember those grooves? Use a quarter inch disc in the joint to help alignment. These don't need to be glued in. While the glue dries, I'm mounting a piece of maple in my chuck. After some roughing, I cut a tenon for a more secure mount. Then reverse the wood in the chuck for further roughing. Then cut a 3 8 inch tenon long enough to be held in my long nose chuck jaws. Then shape it to a flame shape with a short base.
Trying to symbolize the flame, I'm applying yellow dye to the sanded surface. After a short dry time, I'm streaking the wood with red dye. I started sanding a bit early and some dye globbed up, but a little more sanding took care of the problem. Then I sprayed it with rattle can lacquer, let it dry, knocked off the roughness again with fine sandpaper and sprayed it again. The glue is dry. Let's finish this inside out turning. I've mounted the wood between centers. While I'm roughing it a little bit, the objective is to cut a tenon on the top end. Remember that groove and the disc used to line the glue up? Well, the wood shattered around it and the wood jumped off the lathe. No damage, but I lost the center. I did a quick trip to the bandsaw to clean up the end so I can use the intersection to find center again. Next time, I'll just cut off the ends. Now that the wood is back on the lathe, I can finish cutting that tenon. I have to use a tenon so I can drill for the flame and cut a point for the top. Now the wood is reversed and held in the chuck, I can start work to drill the hole and cut a tenon on the base. After fiddling around a little bit, I decide the best course is to simply part off that groove and disc, then finish cutting the tenon. Then drill a 3 8 inch hole through the base to hold the flame. Now that the preparation work is finished, I can get to the fun part, the inside out turning. I'm sticking to my bowl gouge since it is the sturdiest gouge that I own. I turned up the RPMs to near maximum. The faster the better for this project. But no heavy cuts. Only very light cuts. I cannot really ride the bevel due to the amount of air that I'm cutting. I stop the lathe frequently to see the progress. I can see approximately how thick the staves are with the lathe running, but I still like to stop and examine the process. For sanding, I keep the speed high but pressure on the sandpaper very light. I try to let the sandpaper bridge over the wood and keep my hands out of the way. When I do put direct pressure on the sandpaper, I keep my hands downhill from the rotation. I don't want one of the edges to slice a finger. With the shape refined with the sandpaper, I can finish the tip, then completely sand up through the grits. then apply shellac for a finish. I cannot rub it under power, I'll have to buff it later. Now I can finish the base. I did not want to give up the bulk earlier. I'm leaving a 3 quarter inch tenon. Then I can quickly sand and apply a little more finish here. I will not part it off for fear of a disaster. Instead, I'll use the bandsaw. After buffing, my inside out flame is complete. The outer flame is sweet gum, the inner flame is maple, and the base is walnut. The staves are very straight and even. I like the triple stave process since it allows larger openings into the inner space. Wood preparation is more tricky, but very doable with some care in setup. A triple inside out reveals more of the inside through the wider opening. I like it. Please give this video a thumbs up, subscribe on my website, Tell your friends and send me your comments and questions. Every week I make a new wood turning video. Please wear your full face shield anytime the lathe is running. Until next week's video, this is Alan Stratton from As Wood Turns. <laughs>